In this video, we're going to have a look at the vertical translation of trig functions. In the previous video, we saw that the a value multiplied to the front of a trig function stretches the graph vertically. Today, we're going to have a look at what a constant value that is added or subtracted at the end does to the function. Here you can see that we have the normal mother graph of y is equal to cos x because no value has been added yet. If I add a specific value, the graph moves up that amount. And in this case, every coordinate moves up one unit. As this value keeps increasing, the graph still moves up. And in this case, it moved up to two units. This constant value can also be negative. Here the value is minus 2 and the whole graph moved down 2 units. In the previous video we saw that the constant value in front indicates the amplitude of the graph. And here we can see that that is still true because the distance between our maximum and minimum value is 2 and if we divide that by 2 to determine the amplitude we also get this value of 1. This means that the d value at the end of the equation does not influence the amplitude. It also doesn't influence the period of the graph because here it still takes 360 degrees to complete one full wavelength. The range of the graph, however, has changed because this is now all the values from minus 3 to minus 1. So we can conclude that any constant value added or subtracted to the end of a trig equation will move the graph vertically upwards or downwards. Example 1. Sketch the graph of y is equal to sin x plus 1 on the given system of axes. Just like in the previous video, we're going to start with our mother graph for sin x and then apply the translation of plus 1 to this. This means that each one of our important points, so our intercepts with the axes and our turning points, have to move up one unit. So our original y-intercept of 0, 0 will now move up 1 and be at 0, 1. The first turning point was at 90 degrees and 1, and this will now move up to 90 degrees and 2. Then we had an x-intercept at 180 degrees and 0, which will now move up to 1. Our next turning point was at 270 minus 1, which will now be at 270 and 0. And finally, our 360 coordinate will move up to a y-value of 1. And finally, we can draw the sin curve. And here you will see that it now has one y-intercept and one x-intercept. Example 2. Sketch the graph of y is equal to minus 2 cos x minus 1 on the given system of axes. And again we're going to start off with the mother graph, in this case that of cos. And now we have two transformations to take into account. Firstly, the minus 2 in front of which the minus tells us that there's a reflection around the x-axis and the 2 shows us that the amplitude has now doubled. This means that our maximum is now 2 and our minimum minus 2. And now we get to our second transformation which is the minus 1 at the end which means that this whole graph moves one unit down. So each one of the original important coordinates will now move one unit down, which means our minimum is now at minus 3 and our maximum will now be at 1. So if every coordinate moves one unit down, the new graph will look something like this. So even though we can indicate our starting point at minus 3, our turning point at 180 and 2, and our end point at 360 and minus 3, we don't know the specific x-intercept values yet. But 
we have learned how to determine these values in trigonometry. To determine x-intercepts, we need to change the y-value in the equation to a 0. And now we can solve x. I'm going to take the minus 2 cos x on the right and add it on the left. And now I can divide right through by 2. So we have cos x is equal to minus a half. Next, if you take your calculator and say shift of cos minus 0, 0,5, you will see that the first x-intercept is at 120 degrees. If you feel unsure about this part, you can go and re-watch the video on solving trig equations in the trig chapter, and for that you can follow the link in the description. Now we can also make the conclusion that the second x-intercept is at 240 degrees because both the sin and cos waves are perfectly symmetrical. So from the turning point, it is 60 degrees to the left and then also 60 degrees to the right to the two x-intercepts. Now we can go and draw the new cos graph by simply connecting all the coordinates. I'm going to remind you again that you can also make use of the table mode on your calculator to determine enough coordinates so that you can also sketch this graph. It is however important to remember that you must always indicate your starts and end values, your turning points and all intercepts with the axes.